morning. Welcome to Lori Baptist Church on this Lord's Day. What a beautiful day we have today. Amen. Amen. It is gorgeous outside. We, we had a good uh, conversation this morning in Sunday school about how to become a more welcoming church. And so we're, we'll be working on that in the, in the months to come and years to come because it's something we could always improve upon. And we'll be doing that in the future. And, and if you haven't been coming, you didn't make it for our first session, we do encourage you to come uh, for the next three sessions um, to, uh, to give your input and to understand uh, how we might uh, be more welcoming as a church as people come in our doors and, and in our community and, and see our, our facilities. You know, we can make our facilities more welcoming uh, for, for uh, guests when they come as well. So we'll be doing that in the future. I do welcome you. God is good. And all the time. Amen. If you take your worship guide, and I just want to point out that uh, immediately following the service today, we are having a church council meeting, um, and that will be uh, promptly after the service, and we'll get some business done and, and make some plans that uh, we will announce uh, at the Wednesday meeting, the quarterly business meeting, on April the 17th at 5.30 p.m., so we hope that you'll be a part of that meeting as well. The next uh, ladies' gathering is Monday, April the 22nd at Cheddar's at, at 12.30. And all the ladies of the church are invited. Uh, please let Cynthia know uh, so she can make uh, them aware of how many uh, to plan for. And then um, the men of the church are meeting um, Thursday, this Thursday, April the 18th at 11 a.m. at Firestone Grill. Again, we, are still, uh, we can still participate in giving to the Lori Girls' Home. And uh, also, Troop 9 is still selling discount cards, which um, I, I use mine every week. Every week I use it. So I, I don't know how much money I've saved. Lots. So, uh, Jason, thank you for doing that. Thank you for having those, and, and we appreciate that very much. So let's begin uh, with a, a word of prayer to begin our service this morning. Oh, God, we are thankful for this day. And, Lord, we invoke you to come among us in your presence uh, to remind us that your spirit is always with us. As the candle burns, Lord, our hearts burn with your spirit uh, for good things to happen in the world. And Lord, we just look forward uh, to that glorious and wonderful day when you come and return again. In the meantime, Lord, fill us with your passion and your courage and your hope and your encouragement to do wonderful things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's, let's uh, turn in our, our Bibles now, in the Pew Bible, to page 533. 533, we'll be reading from Psalms 4. Let's see if I can find it in my Bible here. Psalms 4. Answer me when I call to you, O my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. How long, O men, will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord will hear when they call to him. In your anger... Do not sin. When you are on your bed, search your hearts and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and trust in the Lord. Many are asking, who can show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have filled my heart with greater joy than when their grain and new wine abound. I will lie down and sleep in peace for you alone, O oh Lord, make me dwell in safety. These are the words of Holy Scripture. Thanks be to God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, my creatures here below. Son. 
grant me whatever I to ask beside. Can I doubt his tender mercy, who through life has been my guide? And the peace, divinest comfort, here by faith in him to dwell. For I know what to be for me, Jesus do with all things well. For I know what to be for me, Jesus do with all things well. All the way my Savior leads me, choose each winding path I tread, gives me grace for every trial, feeds me with a living bread. Though my weary steps may falter, and my soul a thirst may be, gushing round the rock before me, lo, a spring of joy I see. Gushing from the rock before me, no a spring of joy I see. All the way my Savior leads me, oh, the fullness of his love, perfect rest to me is promised in my Father's house above. When my spirit Clothed immortal, wings its flight to realms of day. Lives my soul through endless ages. Jesus, let me all the way. Lives my soul through endless ages. Jesus, let me all the
Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to follow the Acts method of prayer. First, affirmation, confession, thanksgiving, and then supplication. So, um, as we practice that first part, affirmation or acclamation, uh, I want you to think of names you have for God, or that you know of God. And uh, as we bow our heads and close our eyes, I encourage you to, to uh, call out to God publicly with the name that, that sometimes you use or you like to think of him in this hour. Our Father. God, all these names we use and more as we think of you and we just praise your name and we give thanks for your glory and thanks for your presence among us on this day. Today now, Lord, silently we are going to come before your throne to confess our sins. So, Lord, hear our confessions. Lord, you know all these things. And as we come confessing our sins, we know that if we do, you will hear our sins and forgive our sins and that we have a new opportunity for a new life. Lord, we also are thankful for many things. Lord, and as we are thankful, let us proclaim those publicly of the things that we are thankful, Lord, in this hour. God, indeed, we are thankful for many things, things unspoken and spoken, Lord. We could not fill the pages of, 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 of all the books in the world of those things that we are thankful for each day. Sometimes we get overwhelmed by the troubles that we have that we forget, Lord, how thankful we are to have life and family and friends and the community and a church and employment and and just the things in this country that we have that others around the world don't. We are just so thankful. And Lord, now we have things to ask you, things to request from you, things that we hope, Lord, that you will point us in the right direction in. And Lord, now just hear silently, Lord, those things that we come to you today to bring to your table. God, you have heard our prayers this morning, and we come to you looking for all these things and more. Just fill our hearts with, indeed, your peace and your courage and forgiveness, Lord, for others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 If you would turn your scripture uh, to uh, page 1208 in the Pew Bible. Um, and it's First John. Let's find it. First John chapter three. Verses one through seven. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, we are, we now, excuse me, dear friends, now we are children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made known, but we know that when he appears, 
we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins. And in him is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. He who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. These are the words of our Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, would the children come to the front of the sanctuary? Good morning. How are you doing today? You're all by yourself today, aren't you? Well, you're never by yourself when God is God is around, right? And He's always around. Now, in the old days, what's, what is this? A pen. A pen, and it's a special pen because it's got our church's name on it. And I'm going to give it to you. You've got a pen with the church's name on it, the address. Now. In the old days, when they tried to write letters, they had to use ink that was in a little container. And they used, what do you think they used to write with? Pen. Not a pen. They would di- they, a feather. They would dip it, right, they would dip it in, to put a little hole in the feather, and they'd dip it in the, the ink, and they would write. Now, the letters that we have from Paul and John, they were all written that way on what's called papyrus. Which is, which is kind of a special kind of paper that was kind of, kind of glued together. And we actually, some places uh, in the world, like in Europe especially, and in some museums here in our country, they have some of the old manuscripts of the Bible. Now, not the original. We don't know whatever happened to the original ones. But... In the old days, you know, we didn't have a copying machine or a printing press. You had to write everything down by hand. So there was really only one Bible in the community, and the minister had it. So the minister, and he was probably the only one that could read it. So he had to read it so the people would know what the book said. But now everybody's got a Bible. You got them on your telephone. You got them in your house. You got them all in the pews. Bibles everywhere. If you're going to a church, you have a Bible? There's usually a Bible in a church somewhere. Sometimes they put the words up on the screen if you go to a church. But there's a, every, Bibles are everywhere. But in the old days, it was very rare to ever see a Bible, much less hold one. Usually the priest did, and it was kind of very, very sacred. But about 400 years ago, things started to change. And there was a printing press, and Bibles exploded all around the world. And so people like you and me, we could read it for ourselves. We didn't have to listen to a priest tell us about it. You know, one of the advantages that we have today is that there's a lot of information. But sometimes things can get lost in that information, especially the Bible. So let's pray this morning giving thanks for the scripture because it teaches us the right way to live. Can you pray with me that? Lord God, just thank you for the Bible. Thank you that we can all look at it and share it. Unlike people in the olden times, we have, Lord, uh, the ability and the desire to know everything about you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Thank you. Write some good words with that pen, okay? Okay, good. Okay. Oh, we got a, we got a hymn. Yeah. Okay. 
450. 450. If you'll please stand. Acts of the Apostles, we find these words in chapter 3, verses 12 through 19, which uh, can be found on page 1080. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Men of Israel, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at, at us as if by our own power or godliness we have made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. 
You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this by faith. In the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him, as you can all see. Now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders, but this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Christ would suffer. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
A man went to go visit his pastor uh, to talk about a problem he was having. He seemed to have this uh, compulsion that he couldn't get rid of. He said, Pastor, look, I'm, I'm just crazy about golf. Now, it's Master's Week, so the golfer's in a room. I know, I know how you feel. We, those of us who like to watch golf, we, like, we, we enjoy this time of year, especially watching the Masters and how beautiful it is on television. But this man, had a, he had a, a, a compulsion to play golf and to think about golf. He said, even when I'm sleeping, I'm thinking about golf. I, I can see myself driving off the tee. I can see myself hitting a shot from the fairway to the green. And I can see myself putting that ball into the hole over and over again. That's on my mind all the time. I can't think about anything else. The pastor said, well, you're just going to have to concentrate. Just force yourself to think about something else when you lie down at night. Think about the Lord. Think about what the Lord may be telling you right now. That maybe you need to, instead of playing golf on Sunday, come to church. And the man said, preacher, you're crazy. I'll miss my tea time. We're, we are uh, passionate about things sometimes, aren't we? Whether it's sports. It seems like sports is something many people are passionate about. That's all they can think about. They can't get away from it. What is it that you can't get away from? What is it that you have on your mind all the time? Simon Peter, what he was passionate about was serving Christ. Serving Christ. Peter and John in the scripture in Acts, right before this lesson that I read... They uh, had gone to Jerusalem and to the temple. And as they were going up to the temple, there was a, a man who had been born lame. Came to them and asked them for money. And they didn't have any money. They, I don't know. They didn't have pockets like this, but they probably pulled out the pockets or, or whatever they did. They said, I don't have anything. But what, I don't have any silver or gold, they said. But what I do have is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And because of that gospel, I have the power of Christ, and you can be healed. And they called on that power, and the man was healed. No longer lame. No longer needing to be one who was asking or begging for money, for substance. They had a power that was greater than the troubles that we're in the world. And indeed there is a power in Christ that is greater than all of our troubles in the world. If we, like Peter and John, can draw on that power. Now, many people this past week went to go see the solar eclipse, right? To watch the moon come in front of the sun and block out its light. I even saw this morning on my, my Google machine on my phone where people that have small airplanes had started flying them up in the air trying to beat the system so they could watch the eclipse longer. So they would travel north so that the eclipse period of time would be longer visible to them up in the air. And maybe you've seen some of the Wonderful pictures that were taken of that particular event. Some said it is a life-changing event. Several years ago, I went down to South Carolina for the eclipse when it was down there. I, I drove down for the day and, and pulled up in this one community uh, where the eclipse was going to be full. And, man, I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was like a, a, a festival or something. There were people dressed in all kinds of crazy uh, outfits and everybody was parked along the road. I finally made my way up, up on top of a hill where there was a, it was a gr golf green and so I, I, I stayed there what, primarily watching people and the, the, how uh, they were so drawn to that event. Um, 
that I was amazed about that more than I was the eclipse. I mean, it, it, it's something to see, I guess, but I'm, I wasn't passionate about it. But there are those who are and were. They, they're writing how it changed their life to see that. What is it that you are passionate about? What is it that, that makes you excited about? We know, again, Peter, it was not sports, although um, he had that race with John on the way to the empty tomb. It wasn't sports. Have you ever noticed how if uh, someone on television um, is passionate about the Lord and maybe they are, uh, they are a gifted athlete, maybe they, they've won a turn, golf tournament or a basketball game or, or did something great in a football game and they're interviewed and they acknowledge that thanks be to God or the Lord gave me that gift or that strength and so I want to thank him for anything else, that the person with the mic, they, they change the topic or, or they, they cut away when they start talking about Jesus. You ever notice that? Um, first thing we need to notice this morning in our text is that Peter never missed an opportunity to tell people about Jesus. That reminds me of, of someone in this room, Doris. I don't think she ever misses an opportunity to invite someone to church or tell someone about Jesus. Um, and we all need to be more like Peter and more like Doris and, 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 and taking those opportunities when we meet people to share God's love and faith with, uh, with them. But Peter was also clear about confronting people, about the barriers that they have put up from keeping um, them from experiencing God's power and grace that would change lives. Remember what he listen again to what he said uh, about Jesus in verses 12 through 15. Peter saw this, he said to the men, Men of Israel, why does it surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we have made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant, Jesus. You handed him over to be killed and you disowned him before Pilate. Though he had decided to let him go, you disowned the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but, raised, but God raised him from the dead. Peter didn't mince words, did he? He told it like it was. He confronted the Jews, Jewish men who had done that to Jesus, who had turned against Jesus. They were following him, but then they turned against him. And, and Peter let them know it. No one ever had to wonder after Peter had said something, what was he talking about? They knew exactly what he said, exactly what he meant. They didn't have to try to figure it out. I wonder what Peter might say to us today. What would he say to us today? What are the barriers that we have put up to keep us from sharing the gospel or experiencing God's power in our lives like God intended us to have an experience? After all, we too are sinners. We too have fallen short. We too have set other priorities above our priority to God and his body, the church, and its mission. I read about a man who, um, who house had been broken into and some of his valuables had been stolen. And so... He has decided never to leave his house again. No more vocations. No more trips to go see family. None of that anymore. He's going to stay home and protect his valuables. What kind of life is that? What kind of life is 
it, when a church decides to protect its valuables instead of reach the world for Christ. Not a very productive church, is it? Robert, you, in your office, where's Robert at? He's like, oh, you moved around. I'm used to you over there, leaning on that corner right there. But you got, you found another one, didn't you? Robert, how, what would you say, how many vices do you have at your work? You know, that you press things and hold it still. How, about how many, you think? 10 or 12, 10 or 12. We've got one downstairs. I got one downstairs in my basement. I use it all the time. It's funny we use that because it, it holds it firm in place, doesn't it? It's funny we use that word vices when we talk about maybe little shortcomings we have, right? You know, I've got this vice or that vice. It keeps me from doing this or that. Little problems, little troubles. I've got these vices. But if you think about it, those little vices are holding firm in our life and keeping us from following and being a part of the power and strength of God Almighty. Amen? Those little vices are the things that we need to let go of. They need to be gone from us so that we can fully experience the power and the grace of God. I read about a woman whose husband died. I know that I, I shouldn't laugh when I say that. But... I read, I read, but her husband died, and she just couldn't let him go. So she had him embalmed and brought him home and set him up in the house. Must have been a really good embalmer. Because even if you're embalmed, at some point, you're not going to smell pretty. She had a lot, must have had a lot of perfume she could spray on him. I don't know, whatever it is. Um, but eventually she met a man that she fell in love with and they agreed to get married. Now, do you think that man was going to go home and put up with her dead husband sitting up in the living room? First thing he would do would say, get that man and put him in the ground somewhere, right? Where he needs to be. He's gone. I'm here. I'm living. I'm flesh. I'm here now, right? Amen. Well, there are things that should be dead to us as Christians that we need to bury and get rid of. We need to put them behind us. It's over. Amen. And we need to live for Jesus and do the things he would have us to do. Um, but you know, Peter doesn't just give it to them. He offers them hope too. Hear what he says in verse 19 again. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out that the times of refreshing might come. Refreshing. That word in the Greek has psyche. That's part of the word psyche, which means soul or spirit. Psyche, so that your soul, your spirit, can have renewal. Isn't that what we need? Hopefully that's why you come to church, so that you come here for, during this time of, of worship, that your soul, your spirit is renewed. That you have a sense of hope in the future. Whether it's in the future with our Lord in heaven or whether it's tomorrow facing some difficulty or trouble or depression that you may have. You come here to be refreshed, renewed. That's what a revival is all about. It's, a revival is not for evangelism. It's for the church to be refreshed and renewed and, and fired up and passionate about doing the work of God. We want to have a revival. But we're going to need some money to have a revival. So if you want to think about maybe, I know money's tight and you're giving to this. We want, we want money for air conditioners. We want money for, uh, for, uh, 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 it, um, for evangelism. We want money for everything. But sometimes we need, we need money for refreshing. 
don't we? Don't we need to be refreshed and re-energized and revived? So think about that as, as, you, as you have opportunity and have resources uh, for renewal. Now, I, I, I saw a picture online of a, and if you watch the service later, or if you see it in, in, the, um, in, in the, on the web later, you, you will see the picture, but it's a, it's a fireman that's been in, uh, in the midst of putting out a fire, and he's, he's stooping down, and he's drinking out of the, out of the fire hose um, on his truck. Now, some may criticize him because he's, he's not doing his job. He's, he's not holding that hose or knocking down doors or going inside. Instead, he's drinking water on the job. But he needs refreshing. He needs that water to do his job. He's become overwhelmed with, 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 with the heat. He, he sweated all of, his, all of his fluids out. He needs refreshing. In the same way we need refreshing. So that we continue to do our job. So please... Take time to be refreshed. Let those vices that have such a grip over your life go so that you can be filled with the water of life. Pray with me. Oh God, life is so difficult these days. There are so many things that pull us from here and there and we've become so busy that we can't see the forest for the trees. Give us, Lord, the opportunity to be refreshed, to be renewed, so that we may enjoy your strength and power to do your work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Perhaps you want to begin today by acknowledging that you need refreshing. You want to come forward and pray that God will change uh, your life, your heart, your mind, uh, turn you away from the things that have how to hold on you and be looking for a church home. Please stand as we sing our hymn of invitation.
I don't know about you, but I feel like my soul has been refreshed this morning. It's good just to kind of get it out and, let, and just invite people to be refreshed and be filled with God's Holy Spirit. And uh, I feel empowered. I hope you do too. Let's go into the world sharing Christ's love and his compassion and his forgiveness and the good news of his resurrection to the world. In Jesus' name, we go.